Hello, my name is Greg. I'm going to do an LP today, and I'm going to I'm going to do something. I'm going to go back to uh, the Super Nintendo today, and I'm going to do a Nintendo game, as you can see on the screen. And this game is an old classic that I used to love when I was young. This game I'm going to play there now is Super Metroid, also uh, known by some people as Metroid 3. So. I, I played this a long time ago, but now I, it's been so long since I beat it. I just, there's so much about the game I don't remember. So please bear with me if I, please bear with me if I'm not, not a, overly that fantastic with it. And uh, so, let's go. Nineteen eighty four. I remember when I was young, I said not. This is one of the I've never did when I was young own a copy of this game. I do now, but when I was young like uh <laughs> it's like I used to rent it and I said I used to say to my mother, I said, Oh I love this game, I will never ever get bored of this game. He knows now she has a mom, he knows what she was taking. It's like, yeah, whatever. Oh, hold on. Yeah, she's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's like, uh, you get bored of everything. But I think just, uh, e even still, she, like, as a, like, sh sh oh, there we go. The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. Voice acting on Super Nintendo. I first battled the Mitroids on Planet Zebus. It was there that I followed the plans of the space pod leader Mother Brain to use the creatures to attack the galactic civilization. Okay. Oh, Mother Brain! You're a terrible mother. I'll never have you babysit my child. Our next part of the Metroids on their home world is SR388. I completely eradicated them, except for a larva, which after hatching followed me like a confused child. delivered it to the Galactic Research Station at Ceres, so scientists could study its energy producing qualities. I keep forgetting to get it for a second. The scientists' findings were astounding. They discovered the powers of the Mitroid might be harnessed for the good of civilization. Is this civilization is a bit good at all? Satisfied that I was well, I left the station to seek new bounty to hunt. But I hardly gone beyond the asteroid belt when I picked up a distress signal. Siri Station was under attack. <coughs> now I'll go back uh, to what, we, what I was saying. He said, yeah, the argument where so, yeah, every parent would know. It's like, yeah, you won't get bored with it. That's what every child says. And just like every child who throws away their toy. But now look at me, it's like, I'm still playing this game. So, there is a part where she's right. We all get bored of things. And chances are, I got bored in this game too. But, uh, I guess uh, I guess a lot of a lot of people, uh, parents back then, uh, the nostalgia is what keeps these teams alive. Now, does does our parent does our parents even like? I, yes, they got to have some sense of nostalgia. They, they feel most comfortable. With. Yes, of course. 
But yeah, some uh, some games really hold uh, true to us. Now, years later, they've had uh, they've had Metroid Prime, the Metroid Prime series. Oh, hello, Iba. Oh shit! I'm playing this game now, and I got a bad elbow. This is uh, this is a game I want to a bad elbow for sure. I'll make do. I bet some people can play this a lot better, but again, I'm so lost at it. I'm never doing the bother to try to study this guy's pattern to see if he can actually do it. I'm playing Ridley. Ridley is one of the he's one of the main bad guys of the tribe, but he, at, at the beginning he fights you until you're almost dead, and then he flies off to steal the tribe. And then you gotta escape the station. The emergency self-destruct sequence. Evacuate the. Oh yeah, that's one button, of course. Wait, I have a one button. No. <laughs> Of course, you have a rumble. It's not, it's not like da uh, Samus can like dash through a billion things and then fly and zip right up to the sky. No, she, she can't do that. But anyways, yeah. Uh, six years later, uh, people wonder, are they ever going to release like another Metroid game? And uh, they skipped it entirely for Nintendo 64. And then they came out with the Metroid Prime series for the Nintendo GameCube. Number one was the best, and number two was fairly amazing too, but I found number two was the hardest too. Number two was fairly challenging, I think. And then number three. I liked it, but I felt like they really missed their target. I guess that's why, I guess that's why Retro Studios uh, end up giving up on Metroid and then going to Donkey Kong games. Now they're doing, they're doing the Donkey Kong revival games. It seems like Retro Studio likes to revive old series that seems to be long dead and gone. From the sounds of that, and so that. In a way, that makes me a Retro Studios fan because it's, it's, it's nice to see that they're coming out with a new Donkey Kong there now for the Nintendo Wii U. And I would love to try, but currently the dog chewed up the cord to the the, uh, the powers the Wii U tablet, and without the tablet, there is no Wii U. And this is probably one of the previous parts of the game. Hold on, I'm gonna see if there's somewhere I can turn the guy into this. Now, keep in mind, you uh, you've probably seen me, I was playing with an emulator there now. Uh, but, uh, well, my terms is is that like I have a uh, very I have very certain standards when it comes to emulator, and most sp specifically is that unless like I'm not a big fan of using them unless you already own your own your own purchased ver copy of the game. Other than that, uh, if if you don't, it's then it is pure theft. But uh, I I do own my own copy of the game, so yes, uh, right now I'm playing this game on an emulator. This well, this particular copy. But yeah, and then later on, 
uh, I'm a huge fan of Ninja Gaiden games. Uh, the Ninja Gaiden Black, I beat that one on Mass Ninja. And just name all the older ones. For if you've been watching my LPs, you, uh, you probably you may have watched the, the LPs I don't feature in there. Ninja Gaiden 1 and 3. I still should go back to beat Ninja Gaiden 2 sometime, but I just probably don't have patience to go back to Ninja Gaiden right now. Now, okay. He's still awake up there. Trying to get used to all the controls again. Yeah. But yeah, as for the Metroid made by, uh. Ooh, I don't know what I up there. There's always tricks when it comes to this game, and uh, so many of them I don't remember anymore. Perfect. But yeah, as for, uh, the Metroid made by the same company that makes Ninja Gaiden, I think. Tecmo or something at the time. Well, according to it, I liked it. There was, but on par, it was just an average, alright game. A lot of people thought it was just plain garbage. But I, I wouldn't go as far as to be that, to be that brutal against it. It was not bad, but it was not good either. <laughs> And these are the space parts. In 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 all in all sense of understanding that I understand the Metroid series, I can go as far as to say these are pretty much the, the true bad guys in the series. Uh, these guys here, and I like it. I never knew that when I was younger. I just said, "Oh, that's just another enemy." But no, these guys are the these guys are the, are the actual space parts that I I know of. Like, the, if you really want to give them a a face, and these are the and their leader, of course, is Mother Brain, Ridley, and Kraid. They're they're they're, they're, they're the three main ones. Uh, there's two other bosses that was introduced in this game. Uh, I forget their name now, uh, but they're just they're 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 just extra bosses that were added in. They're not considered the main ones. It's it's a shame to see uh, it's a shame to see that Crane was not used much after Ridley was way overused. Even Mother Brain I don't think was used much except for uh, Metroid Zero Mission. But wasn't that just a remake of uh, remake of uh, Metroid One? So it, it was strange to never see Kraid after. You, uh, there's a boss in this game which turned out to be a, an optional boss uh, in Metroid Other M, the one made by Tecmo or OA. Anyways, so yeah, it's Team Ninja. I, th I, think, I don't think you're always caught Team Ninja, and uh, I'm wondering. Yeah, I, th I, th I should look that up though, but I don't think they were always known as uh, Team Ninja, I'll tell you that. But I think they were. Now it makes me wonder, was, was it? For Ninja got black and off DS, yes, I think I remember uh, Team Ninja that I think about. It. So what, what, what was it? Completely different company made the made the uh, made the newer Ninja Guns another one? You know, that's a question I never even asked myself. And chances are, it's a completely different playstyle. They're definitely not the same gun. I'm going to do some research on uh, on that for sure. And there is my map. Map data access completed. That's so nice. Yeah, I
I would really like to know that. But anyways, yeah, yeah. So the uh, the ones, of course, then they're, 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 and since um, they tried other M, it's a modern game. It was Team Ninja that made uh, other M. Now, see me, I appreciate I appreciate the cool, uh, like some of the cool aspects of it. It's like uh, you you fight, but uh, it it, it uh, utilizes some of the some of their fighting aspect. I really like the part where Samus would jump on uh, on his enemy and then blast them. Now, it's just a symbolization of everything you see in modern gaming, but I guess classic fans were, would look at that and say, no, why? Why? It's not Metroid. This is like, look, why? I looked, why not? What's wrong with Samus uh, jumping on a big monster and, uh, and, and blasting him from close up? Like, it's something I could see her doing, but it's like, oh, it's, I don't know, is that too new? I don't know. I don't know. But all the same, again, my, 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 my attitude towards that game, it's not a bad game, but it's not a great game. It's not even a, it's, yeah, it's our right game. I don't even consider it good. I consider it our right. It's, it, it, has, it has interesting things. It's pretty, pretty cool. It was cool how they explained how uh, Ridley, uh, how we kept bringing Ridley back. It's just like, uh, at least I don't know if that's how it normally is, but uh, but it ain't that ain't, ain't that the whole what they were trying to explain was Ridley start like these creep. Ridley is always brought back, brought back in the game, brought back. He dies, he gets brought back. How does he come back? Well, I think that game kind of explained that, and that was pretty cool because when you first see this little furry creature on the ground, I didn't know that that creature would end up evolving and transforming and end up becoming Ridley. Now, sometimes this guy has in the past given me a little bit of trouble. But I can't see that happening right now. But then again, I better not get overconfident. I can imagine as a child why I found him so hard. He's not the easiest thing to encounter right at the beginning of the game. Hard to believe in modern games today. Even games that are based on classic games, ch challenges like that in some cases are. Modern games designed like classic games must. Unless, unless they're designed to be completely retro, unless their purpose is to be retro, it's it's almost unforgivable to have a boss that difficult at the beginning game there now because games has changed and even games in this design like classic gaming must adapt to that level of difficulty. It's, it's it's very hard for the younger game uh, younger gamer now today to to have uh, have the pages to sit down and play a game like this when they can play a hundreds of other games that are just as fun and less 
less of a challenge to go true. Now, some may say the modern gamers like a little bit. I know. Well, why don't even, I can't even finish that uh, because I, I, I don't even know words for what I'm trying to pick up my head. Whoa! My L button is so bad, so hopefully that don't affect my gameplay. Minecraft has a tricky reputation too, you know, you got a lot of people who, it's a shaky reputation, you got a lot of people who love it, but you got a lot of people who really, really hate it too, it's like, uh, I've read online about, like, about the people, like, about both. I should have went the other way, but I'm not doing it now because I know what's the other way, the other way is practically not, it's not really worth wasting my time to go back to just to fill out the map a little bit. No, this form of gameplay has actually been modernized of its own rights because uh, not, not quite so well today. It's almost like I think in all aspects that they're abandoning, they're abandoning this type of gameplay to a certain extent because the biggest example is how Castlevania pretty much uh, started to uh, take me for example. But, but it seems like Castlevania uh, Castlevania is willing to try anything because well, because what are they trying to do now, right? And it's like uh, uh, they're rebooting the whole series as if like okay, the old series is dead. Well, I know uh, Castlevania itself has a shaky release because I was just going to talk about uh, uh, about uh, Minecraft, right? Uh, like where a lot of younger people like Minecraft today. But Castlevania always had that shaky uh, because it was always touch and go. You always got people who loved it, you always got people who hated it. And even in their fans, that, lo that love and hate can vary among each and every single game. Because, because it seemed like uh, Konami, though a company I respect, there's, there's a certain level of uh, in Kana there's a certain level of desperacy in Konami that like they're willing to do, just do anything, right? It's like they got no boundaries. They, 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 they can wreck their they can wreck their popular series and, 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 and almost as if it's not even a problem. But then again, I didn't like the reboot myself, but the reboot some people has. Now let's get back uh, to what. What I was about to say about Minecraft. A lot of a lot of complaints that people are talking about Minecraft is that it with a few complaints is that it's it's too easy. They, they, a lot of complaints goes on the graphics. It's like it's like the graphics looks like it's uh looks like a, a an NES put in 3D. And also it's just it's that it, not only is it easy, it's like there's no point. That's what the complaints are, but now we're like, I've actually played Minecraft, I might do an LP of it, uh, with, uh, with my, uh, son's, uh, older brother there, but, uh, so I might do that later. But yeah, so I don't, so I see the good bad Minecraft. It's not as bad as what the haters say, but it's not as good as what the lovers say, if that makes any sense at all. But it's, it's, it's a, it's a fairly decent game. Ooh, I remember this, because this is where... Seems like with every series, it's always touch and go. 
and this is why I'm not a big fan of uh, Nintendo nowadays. They're uh, it's, it's like it feels like they can survive on their own with the Mario's and the Zelda's, and it feels like that's going to get third-party support. My my argument is when it comes to Nintendo is that they're not going to get third-party support, but it's not entirely Nintendo's fault. There was a lot of uh, hate going around on Nintendo for years, and eventually people start listening to that hate, and that hate spreads. And now it's at the point that really nobody gives a damn about Nintendo anymore. This Wii U is one of the worst-selling Nintendo systems. It's actually, from what I'm gathering, it's doing even worse. It's doing even worse than uh, the GameCube. And now, get this, this is what the Wii U offers. It offers backwards compatibility, and offers that uh, uh, tablet, that gamepad. It even gives the controller for people who don't like the gamepad. It offers everything the gamer wants. Now, granted, it's a lot of people say that it's, that it's a weak system. We don't even know how powerful this thing is, because it uses a processor cod the espresso and a graphics card kind of latte. Some people have hacked these things to find out the true specs of the Wii U, and they say, give or take, in some ways it's worse than current gen models, and in some ways it's better. But I guess that's not really good enough to satisfy the, the, the gamers today, and the, it's like it's it's the same mistake they made before. Nintendo said it's like, oh wow, the Wii was too weak, and the, we sold the Wii a lot, but the games didn't sell because a lot of people don't do it. So they started preaching all this stuff about doing things differently, but they did, didn't do things differently. Now I don't want to be uh, now. The thing is, is that Nintendo Nintendo wants their people to do things differently, but again. And they do offer so much that people would like all these things. Just, uh, and then, and, and now they are offering their pitch, their Mario and their Zelda, the Wind Waker, the Wind and the Mario's. And nobody gives a damn because it's like because the, the hate's there, and also Nintendo made mistakes their own. They're not a perfect company. They made mistakes their own, their own. So the support is not there. It's not going to be there, no matter how many times uh, Reggie says, it's like, we got to push out our Mario, Zelda, and what that, and once people see what the system can do, people already know what the system can do. People already know. The system could do probably um, uh, somewhat on par with current gen models. How could that even, even come close to the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One? Oh, I won't even go about the Xbox One because... The Xbox, the Xbox itself got its a uh, little bit of a. Uh, they got their own problems to worry about because the, uh, they. It seems like it, uh, everyone's about the PlayStation 4. Ooh, PlayStation 4. So it's that's reality, except that it's that's what ever that's what everyone believes will be the game today. But it's almost been like that for the longest time. It's actually gone that ridiculous now. The hate on Nintendo. I ain't gonna joke. The hate on Nintendo now has gone to a point that is that ridiculous that there's some people who are saying, they're actually saying, was, were we wrong about the Super Nintendo being better than Sega Genesis? And actually that question's coming up. I'm like, what? Of course the Super Nintendo is better than Genesis. But that question is coming up. Were we wrong? Were we wrong? I was like, what? Hold on, I gotta catch him with his boss. Oh wait now, he's what am I saying? He's, he's very easy. I shouldn't do that. Well I got the team. So anyway, yeah, I'll go back some ago. Yeah, so that uh, that argument's come up. It's like, whoa. it's like, you know, uh, people says, yeah, the, it started going downhill with the 64, but the hate on Nintendo has been pretty bad when he says maybe the Super Nintendo wasn't that great. That maybe, may, maybe we were too harshly harsh on the Sega Genesis. It's like, what in the world is people talking about? Is, uh, am I even hearing that? But that's it. That's the hate spreads and. 
And uh, I'm not gonna blame it on him. It's like, oh, that's the excuse. That's just a part of the bundle. It's Nintendo's stupid mistakes that they're pulling off lately, and also with the hate. Because the way I look at it, when you have that much pressure saying change or die, that that can lead to poor business choices. So, like, I, that Nintendo's under a lot of pressure. Change or die. It really don't make you feel a lot too motivated to really do what you've been doing the past 20 years when people is pretty much telling you to fuck off. And that's, that's exactly what's happening in my perspective right now. So, again, Nintendo's throwing out their pitch, they're bringing out their new Zelda, they're bringing out their new Mario, and they're bringing out their uh, Super Smash Bros. 4, but it only seems to appeal to the most of the most dedicated fans. It's like it's like the people who will say, "Oh, it's by Nintendo. That's it." But then that's that's not that's not enough to keep them going. It's it has been for the longest time, but most 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 fans are starting to see it's like this is starting to this is starting to get a little bit bad. It's like it's like the ship is sinking. Are we going to have the bell ship? What are we going to do? But, and this leads back to Nintendo's, uh, Nintendo has a certain level of arrogance I don't like. Is that the, I, I know they had it for years. Like, I, I've, I've always noticed that Nintendo has a subtle arrogance about them too. That they, like, just some things they just, feels like they can just do when they can't. But now it's shown more than ever. It's like, this, uh, their arrogance side really comes out to say, oh, if Nintendo goes down, well, we're not going to go third-party support. Nintendo goes down, there goes your Mario and your Zelda and all that. It's like, how much confidence do you have in Mario and Zelda to think that, oh, to think that anyone would really give a damn? Now, that's a bad way to say it, but how much confidence do you have to think that people will give a damn if, uh, if because if Zelda goes down, there's no more Zelda again. Yeah, it'd be upsetting, but people move on. I don't know where Nintendo gets now on there playing uh, Nintendo games right now, so I guess we are in this conversation. But it's 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 so true. Like people, it's like it's like I don't know if uh, Nintendo realizes that people will move on. They they, they go on with their lives with or without Zelda, which is kind of sad because. Not that happen, but uh, no. Yes, and then move on without the trying, even though I'm fighting the trying. <laughs> A friend of mine, an old friend of mine, anyway, he, he, he really likes the survival horror uh, type games, right? And, uh. Let's keep. He really likes the survival horror type games, and he, he's someone who really got no time for Nintendo, uh, except for that one little thing about how a lot of Resident Evil games seem to appear on Nintendo for some reason. So that's the only exception. Because where he likes uh, survival horror. But now, but he also likes this game. I believe I don't see this game as a survival horror. This game is more adventure. But I could see how this game, be, this game be, uh, this, it's not a, it behaves like a survival. It's it, like that. I think I could see that like, like this told out because I was actually surprised I really liked this game. But this game is like one of the few games he liked out of the system because we all grew up on it. But he, he was a weird hand. It's like he's like, nah, I didn't like I didn't like Mario, didn't like Zelda, didn't like he, he, pretty much he said that I did didn't like Final Fantasy. In fact, I didn't like anything on the Super Nintendo. He said that. I, I think Super uh, I I don't think the Super Nintendo was that good of the system. But he loves this game. I'm almost to go to fire to say that this is probably the only game I've ever known and ever talk about or even play. And the way he plays this game is that he has start, I don't ever see him save. So he has start 
and if he dies once, he'll give up. So he, he, I, I, I do see him playing it for the survival part. So, survive until you die, it's like, shoot, I died, that's all over now. He didn't even say that, he's like, oh, I can't believe I died this part. And he just puts it down and, never, and probably never plays the game for another year. I've never seen anyone play this game that way, but... That was, that was before I got into the survival horror genre of video games, and I, now I see the qualities that you've got you to gotta be fairly good at video games to, to be able to play a survival horror game, too. They actually have the patience to realize that, hey, you don't have much resources to get by. But I'm not even running. I should say running. Okay, you don't have much resources to get by, so you better not shoot everything you see. That, that that was a completely different world than I'm used to. I'm used to I'm used to like Zelda. You shoot it, uh, you see it, you kill it. <laughs> you, you kill everything you see because it's, because it's Zelda, you're so overpowered. It's Zelda's not hard. Now, A Link to the Past was a little bit challenging. Some of the older ones is, but Zelda is. If if there was any sense of difficulty that the uh, game has considered the claim, they pretty much they pretty much lost it there now. Skyward Sword, I admit though, uh, getting used to the controls. Now that Skyward Sword was a bit of a challenge, but not overly much. Now I'm thinking back, can you imagine the secrets of the uh, trying to find the secrets in this game? Yeah. Can I jump up there? I know, I, I, I can, I can jump up there now. With wild jump, I think. Yeah. Wild jump. It's it, it's a technique in this game that's not so obvious. Uh, it doesn't really teach you, but the advantages of knowing it is uh, is more than valuable. Spazer. I remember there was some parts of this game that was remotely crushing. Just those little things, I think like uh, being caught in the water. I, I, I remember now, I think the water, before you get uh, the suit, I forgot, I forget what it's called, uh, the gravity suit, yeah, I think. Water was a very frustrating aspect of, the, uh, of this game, if I remember. I forgot to run. That's just so sloppy. Oh, and there's no, there was no bird. Trap. Oh. 
now. I think I'm down here for one essential purpose. I think that's to to get a high jump or something. How are you doing with your Minecraft? Anyways. There you go, high jumpers. I think that's the only reason that you gotta come down here. No, I'm playing Super Metroid. Speaking of Link to the Past, I, maybe I should do an LP of a Link to the Past as well. Huh? No. Speaking of which, uh, didn't, wasn't there like that one point that Nintendo like wanted to, like I think they went back on this, it just goes to show like where Nintendo can learn, but like didn't want, Nintendo want to only run some ah uh, LPs, it's like, like my LPs are non profit they're just for fun. But people, uh, like some people do LP, LP, LPs for profit. Didn't like Nintendo wanted to claim ah uh, like that's almost like Nintendo claiming to say okay because you played our game we own your voice <laughs> or something like that. Be right back. Uh, I'm gonna I'll be right back. Uh, I don't really know. There's uh, there there is always a touch and go when it comes to LPs though. Uh, but I'll be right back anyways. Okay, I'm back. Now let's continue. Yeah, so I forget why I'm going this way. But if I can get a miss out of it, that's great. Oh, wait. Wait a second. I thought for sure. No. I just I picked the. Yeah, I picked up boots. Yeah, but those were the. The high jump, sorry if I remember. I think I, I didn't save then, but I think when it comes to saving, I think I might often run out a small bit of a paranoid level too. Wait, I can't do that too. The reason why I say that is because often in games, oh yeah, get out of there, Samus. That's not the place for you. I think in games that I uh, offers me save is because when I was young, I I always routinely save because being in a small uh, growing up in a small town, uh, power outages was not as it, it was uncommon, but not as uncommon as you would like uh, when you're playing these type of long games. So saving in the beginning. Uh, Oh, oh, no, 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 I don't want to go in there, no, 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 give me a, no, 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 oh, there you go, perfect. Yeah, but saving, saving did eventually become a general habit because it's like, you don't want to lose your progress. Everything okay over there, buddy? Yeah. Bored, are you? Yeah. Uh, What are you talking about? Oh, in the game? Oh yeah, that's the elevator. You know something, I never even thought about it before, but if you want to compare Metroid to most first person shooter, uh, not first person, side scrollers, I think that's the screen, right? Like, that is the screen. Now, you think of our games where you like, play Donkey Kong or play Mario and all that. I know I noticed the space jump boots was a high jump, but think about how high that is compared to what you see in most uh, side scrollers. Like think of Mario jumping that high on an average basis. That's a really high jump. Oh, 
some weird when it comes to secret stuff. It's just like, it makes you feel like that you're, that there's nothing there, right? And it's like, oh wait, I just blasted out a part of the wall. Secrets like that, I think secrets like you want this game, like yeah, uh, when you publish through, is actually completely unacceptable like in today's gaming. Like I bet if you see that in the game today, yeah, that most people would find that not acceptable at all. No, That's, this is this is insane. Yeah, but but back back then, once upon a time, this was this was it. Yeah, but this was what gaming was all about. Okay, perfect. I was wondering where to go then. Even after all this. Oh. Even after all this time, this. This discovery secrets is so interesting. Now, I think this boss here is uh, this is what I'm about to point. Don't this remind you of Bowser in some way? Wait, can I no, okay, shoot that? I'm gonna run through that. Don't that kind of remind you? Like, I think uh, if. I think that was probably the original idea of Kraid while they were building the game. And I think that's probably where they were going to go with it before they reinvented them. But I think they decided to keep them there as a tribute to um, Metroid 1. The show is like, remember this guy? And then it's like, okay, uh, yes, I remember this guy from Metroid 1. And then, then you open this door? Hey, this. What are you sing what are you doing? It's like you're like It's like you're singing opera over there or something. Like, this what sound like you're singing over here. Sing sing do you have to be doing that though? <laughs> it's like wow. And now, ain't this always like the creepiest thing ever when you first uh, come up with this thing? No. I always thought when you come up with that thing that it was the creepiest thing ever. But I, I was a kid then, uh, like now, like that's not creepy now, but when you're a kid that's kind of creepy. You just walk out, uh, walk up with this guy on the ground and like a bunch of uh, balls or something on him. And you see this off. Square. No, they're gone now. And now I'm gonna fight Kraid. I can either fight him with the missiles and have a fun battle or can demolish him with super missiles. Because demolishing is fun too. I think back in the day, there's just giant, huge, giant video game bosses all over the world today. But I think back in the day, Kraid was probably the first of its kind. Because not very often you see a boss. Oh, wow. Oh, I can just. What am I doing? Not too often you see a boss. Whoa! Oh, what? No, really? What am I doing? He is, yes, back in Super Nintendo, that's, that's not much bigger than him. There's just these little pictures that reminds me of uh, that, uh, reminds me of Attack of the Deadly Star Wars series of Sights, uh, from Castlevania. You, you could almost... I don't like the music of the battle. You don't? No. It's kind of... Well, I better be, uh, just... I better start. It's a battle more seriously. He uses his fingers 
Shoots as he has fingers start chasing around. He also shoots these teens out of the way too. Stomach corks. Demolish. That's crazy. Ridley is a lot harder though. Well, all the other bosses are there. Uh, they are slightly underpowered in this game for some reason, considering he's one of the, the big, he's, he's pretty much one of the big leader of the parks. When he does, seems very hard. Yeah, but he's a bit, compared to Ridley and the other bosses, he's a, he's a bit of a pushover, I'd say. So I have the virus suit now, that's the best thing in the world. Oh wait, come here for a second. Come here. You want to see? You want to see? You want to see the bugs on the uh, on that guy? There the arrow. Oh my god, that is creepy. When you're young, that that do come out. Uh, that do come out. It's a little bit creepier than you expect. But yeah, this not this not overly creepy, you know. Ridley next. Oh well, no, no, no. It'll be a long time before I fight Ridley. I gotta go into the the lower. So where are you now? Uh, I'm long before I fight another boss. Now I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go start adventure around the planet more. Oh, the mini Ridley's back. Uh, the mini Ridley's back. Thank you for those precious super bombs. Hmm. Here's a couple space parts. The, the, the space parts, once upon a time, kind of remind reminds me of like praying mantises. That's what they remind me of. But now, uh, the space parts of the day just, just reminds me of something absolutely nuts. In fact, if I uh, I remember playing Metro One, the space parts in all uh, their varieties are probably a few of the trickiest enemies I ever remember facing in that game, other than the bosses. Okay, well that would be all. I just saved it, and, and this almost an hour in, so this raw in my LP today. So thank you for watching, and have a good day.